I won't make you repeat this morning. Good morning. Now, I've, I heard that better than I did y'all. Good morning. Now, I heard them better than I did y'all. <laughs> We're glad all of you are here with us this morning. I just want to give you a few announcements. Um, number one, we've got a mission opportunity. Uh, young single mom has um, been burned out of her house. She was renting, lost to everything. I put this on Facebook yesterday. Um, so uh, Rachel Petty is going to take care of this for us. So if you will, uh, just see her today. If you want to uh, help with clothes, food, uh, food or uh, toys for the children, uh, just see her and she will take care of that for us. Um, also, um, need nursery, <coughs> excuse me, nursery workers. And if you are willing to work in the nursery, uh, see Lynn Brown. One thing to remember is the more people we get, the less you have to do it. Right? We got 10, that's every 10 weeks. Uh, so uh, volunteer to see her. And the thing is, if you go down there, if we... You're down there about 10 or 15 minutes and nobody shows up, you can come back up here. Um, we will have 5 p.m. Uh, Bible study tonight, uh, so be here for that. We'll uh, finish up what we started a couple of weeks ago, uh, that lesson, so we'll finish that up tonight. Also, March 18th from 11 to 1 p.m., our mission team is having a Brunswick stew sale. Our mission team members, y'all stand up, please. Andrea, stand up. All these people have tickets to our, for our miss, uh, Brunswick stew sale. So if you want Brunswick stew, please see one of them uh, today or this week sometime. Um, y'all may be seated. Y'all didn't have to stand up that whole time, but I'm glad you did. Um, but this will help us get back to Mississippi and uh, do some more work and probably com complete some work that we did down there last year. Um, March the... No, I was going to say March 18th again. I um, want to announce that there is a women's conference at White Plains Baptist Church on May 20th from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. I saw that the other day, so... Uh, if you would, ladies, if you would like to go to that, you can go to White Plains Baptist Church's website or see me and I can get you all the information you need to, to do that. that. Again, that's on May 20th. Um, somebody left something uh, over here where I sit and I want to share it with you. How many of you like cake? Raise your hand and, you know, I think everybody likes cake, right? Uh, this is a recipe for spiritual cake. It says, start with one cup of thoughts, add one cup of consideration for others, add two cups of sacrifice, add three cups of well-beaten thoughts, seven cups of forgiveness, mix well, adding tears of joy, sorrow and sympathy, Flavor it with little gifts of love and kindly service. Flower in four cups of prayer and faith. Add in daily Christian living. Bake well with a heart of humor and kindness. Serve any time with a big smile. This cake is sure to satisfy the hunger of starved souls. That's, the kind of, that's a good kind of cake, isn't it? That's the kind of cake we all need to partake in because guess what? There ain't no calories there. <laughs> if you will, turn over to the uh, back of your bulletin and look at our prayer list. Um, we've added a couple over, the, um, over Wednesday night. Um, Scotty Babb's uh, fan, uh, children all have a bad vi stomach virus and it's pretty bad. Um, I was talking to Francis and Miss Jean earlier, and I think it's the youngest one, right? It's very, very bad. Uh, so keep praying for them today. Um, the family of Phil Hopkins, pray for, pray for that family. 
Um, continue to pray for Martha Brannon. Uh, she is at home. Um, does anybody else have any prayer concerns? If you will, make them known by the uplifting of your hands. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just come to you today. We're thankful that we can be in your house, Father. Father, we're thankful that we can come to worship you freely without having to meet in secret as most Christians do across the world. Father, I just pray today as we meet here in your house that we can worship you in a way that we've never worshipped you before. Father, I pray for this service today. I just ask that you speak. Father, that you just turn the Holy Spirit loose in this place. Father, let him go up and down each aisle and convict hearts where they need to be convicted. Comfort hearts where they need to be comforted. Father, I pray that everything that's said, everything that's done, every word that's spoken will just lift your name high above all. Father, as we look at this prayer list, Father, it just seems that it keeps growing. And Father, we know that there's many, many more that we need to pray for that are sick, that are hurting, that are dealing with situations that we know nothing about. And Father, we just put them all in your hands. Father, we ask that you do something amazing in their lives. Father, for the ones that's lost loved ones, Father, we just pray that you just send your saints, your children around them. <clears throat> Let them feel your love and your comfort. Father, just be with us today as we worship you. That's our prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
They see him here. They see him here. And they see him here. We know it because he said it. Jesus said, the world will see him when the world sees us. That's why together we do this. We give so that those who've not yet seen can see. It means something when the world sees how we give. It means something because we do not look the same. It means something because we do not sound the same. It means something because when we give, this is what the world sees. They see the gospel doing what the world cannot. They see the gospel making us one. And so we give. We give so that missionaries can go. We give so that churches can be started, hurts can be healed, and truth can be shared. We give so the world might see Jesus in us, united, united as one. I wanted to say something earlier about this, but um, each one of us is called to do missions, physically do missions, okay? Uh, that's not to give money. That means to go and do something, okay? We've got an opportunity right now to do a mission project. We've got plenty of opportunities to do mission projects. But through the North America Mission Board, we have an opportunity to give and to support missionaries that are all throughout North America spreading the gospel message. Um, our Annie Armstrong uh, Easter offering goal for the church is $2,300. That is very uh, obtainable. Uh, you should see, um, what are those things I'm looking for? Offering envelopes <laughs> in the pews in front of you. So take one of those, pray over it uh, this week. Uh, you can give this week. Our march will be next week. But pray over it this week. Take it and have it to where you can see it. and Pray over it and pray that God will tell you what he would have you to give. And I promise you something, if God tells you that he would have you give this amount, he's going to take care of it. He's going, you, you're not going to miss that money. I promise you that. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just are so thankful that you call us uh, as Christians to be doers of the word. Father, to be on a mission, to, to help those that can't help themselves. And, and Father, not only to help them, but to share the gospel message with them. Father, we're just so grateful to be in Tabernacle Baptist Church where uh, we are a mission-minded church, Father. We, you know that. Um, and Father, we just pray that through each one of us, we can meet and exceed this goal uh, for these missionaries in North America. And Father, I just pray today for each one of these missionaries, each one of these church planners across North America. Father, I just pray that you strengthen them. Father, that you give them courage, encouragement, that you give them courage as they go to do your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Did I not say that? I did. The march is next Sunday, Darlene said. I thought I said that, but if I didn't, the march is next Sunday. Everybody got that? Raise your hand. Okay, everybody got it.
Holy Heavenly Father, Lord God, how thankful we are that we can be in your house this day. Lord God, we know that there are many, Lord God, that want to be here but can't. Father God, we pray that you would touch their hearts, Lord God, in bodies, that you'd heal them, Lord God, and that your Holy Spirit would speak to them this day and bless them. And Lord God, we, we know, Lord God, that uh, our world is sick, Lord God. Oh, Father God, there's so much going on in this world today. Lord God, we know that the Bible says it's going to be times like this before Jesus comes again. Father God, prepare our hearts, Lord God, for when he's coming. Lord God, I know it's got to be soon. And Father God, we pray your blessings upon this service this day. We pray, Lord God, that you'd speak through Jamie. Bless him, Lord God, and bless Gina. God, bless their families. And Father God, bless this church. Bless this service this day, Lord God. May your name, the holy name of your son, be uplifted and glorified. Lord God, if there's someone here this day that don't know you, we pray that the Holy Spirit would touch their hearts, Lord God, convict them of their sins, help them to know, Lord God, that they need Jesus in their lives. Father God, forgive us of our sins. And Lord God, we know that there'd be no forgiveness if it wasn't for the cross. It wasn't for the blood of our holy Lord and Savior. Lord God, he makes us, Lord God, worthy to, to pray to you. Lord God, to speak to you this day. Father God, we'd ask your cleansing blood upon us all. Father God, you know, you, you see our military. Lord God, you see the troubles, Lord God, that they have and scattered across the world. We ask you bless them, Lord God, and their families. Keep them safe. Father God, just bless our nation. Turn us, Lord God, away from the evil that Satan has put here. Turn us back to you. Lord God, we know we need a revival in our hearts, each and every one, Lord God. We ask that you'd revive us, Lord God, and that you'd send the Holy Ghost, a spiritual filled revival to this church, to all churches, to all people, Lord God. Lord God, just go with us now and be with this uh, offering and ask that you'd use it for your glory. And Lord God, bless the youth of our nation. Lord God, we know that they're the future leaders. Lord God, bless them. Keep them away from what Satan's got out there, Lord God. There's so many temptations nowadays, Lord God. Please give them strength to resist the, uh, Satan as he tries to lure them away, Lord God. Strengthen their, each and every one. Lord God, now just go with us, and may we follow what you would have us to do and do your holy will in our lives now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Mother, this is your son, Jean, this is your mother. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and be turned into John chapter 19. I know at times I fail to do things and mention things, but uh, Abby, I was sitting there listening to you sing, and I remember, <clears throat> I can't remember who it was, but uh, back, I think it was last Easter, around last Easter, they came out the door and they said, man, y'all got some gals that can sing here. And, and it's true, I'm so glad to be the pastor of a church where we have so much musical talent. Uh, thank you, Abby. Allie, always thank you. And everybody that sings solos, I know at times I fail to, to say that, and it's not anything but oversight. Um, I failed to mention this last week. How many of you has got your crosses? How many of you are called up on your crosses? Okay, if you're not called up on your crosses, what's the first one? Father, forgive them, right? You know, Jesus prayed for his enemies. He said, forgive them. And that teaches us that we need to forgive and ask for forgiveness for those who have done us wrong, right? What's the next one? Today you will be with me in paradise. I know at least Annette is listening to the messages. Thank you, Annette. Uh, but what does that, and Vicki does too. Vicki reminded me of that. I wasn't going to call you out, but you, you did that on your own. Uh, today you will be with me in paradise. What does, that, what does that tell us? That salvation is immediate, right? And that as soon as we are saved, we're in Jesus' hand and nothing can happen to us, right? Okay, so today... You should be able to uh, put woman, behold your son, and John, behold your mother on that. Again, that's just uh, something that you can put in your Bible as a bookmark and to see and to remember these things that we talk about. We'll do something a little bit different. Um, Eli, if you will, play that video. Wait just a minute. Get it ready. I want you all, at the beginning of this video, it's very short, but I want you to look at Mary's face, and I want you to burn that image into your mind this morning. Go ahead, Eli. Mother, this is your son. John, this is your mother. In the book of Luke, Luke records and says, But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will call his name Jesus. 
He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. This is a picture of of Gabriel appearing to Mary to inform her that she was chosen to be the son of the Messiah, the son of the Savior of the world. Now, I want you to think for just a moment. This teenage girl named Mary is visited by Gabriel, and he's telling her all these things. He's telling her that the Savior of the world will be her son. Do you think that Mary had an idea of what that meant? I think she did. I think she had an idea, but at the same time, I don't think she had a clue as to what that meant. You understand that, right? People ask me all the time, they say, uh, is preaching what you thought it was? And I said, yeah, but it's not what I thought it was either. I mean, you got an idea of what you're going into, but you don't really understand until you're in the thick of it, right? And that's the same thing I see with Mary. Um, Y'all know the song, Mary, Did You Know? And I love that song. Even though Mary knew her son Jesus would be the one that the Jewish people were waiting on, I don't think she really comprehended every detail of his life and of his ministry. You know, the song goes, Mary, did you know that your baby boy would give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that uh, he will calm the storm with his hands? I don't think Mary knew that that was going to happen. Mary, did, did you know that your son will walk on water? I don't think she knew that he would walk on water. And this isn't from the song, but Mary, did you know that your son would be betrayed? Mary, do you, did you know that your son would be rejected? Did you know that your son would be murdered? Think about it. I don't think she really understood all this. In the clip that we just watched, we can only get a glimpse of what Mary must have been feeling there at the cross, just a few feet away from Jesus, suffering for all of us. You see, I'm sure that so much of Jesus' life was passing through her mind at that time. You know, I'm, I'm sure she was thinking about when Jesus was born, thinking about his first steps, his first words. I'm sure she thought about holding him close to get him to go to sleep. I'm sure she thought about her, his first visit to the temple and how he astounded all the teachers, his first day of school. She probably thought back to watching... Jesus with Joseph out in the shop learning to be a woodworker. And I'm sure she thought about the miracles that she saw him perform. I'm sure all those moments were running through her mind as Jesus hung on the cross in front of her. But you know, there's one thing I I really wonder And I would love to know the answer to this question, but the thing is, when we get to heaven, it's not going to make a difference anyway. But I wonder if Mary remembered going to taking Jesus to the temple when when he was just a few days old and meeting a man named Simeon. Luke records it as, as this. He says, Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to him and to be a sign 
that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed. And this is the last part of that verse. And a sword will pierce your soul too. See, I, I wonder if she remembered that at that moment when, when she was there at the cross. We can only imagine how that sword must have felt as she watched Jesus dying on the cross right in front of her. As she watched Jesus push up to get another breath and then sag back down. Let's look at John chapter 19, verse 25 through 27. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. And then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her to his own home. That's what the Bible says. In our scripture this morning, John lists four women and one disciple that was at the cross. This morning, we're only going to focus on that one disciple and on Mary. Who was the disciple whom Jesus loved? John. Now, we got we to gotta realize something here. That is only found in the book of John. Who wrote the book of John? John. Now, I don't think this, I don't think John in, in doing this was trying to make himself better than anybody else. I really don't. So don't, don't think that. But while on the cross at this time, Jesus made two statements or two commands, uh, the first of which Jesus said, Woman, behold your son. Now, when he said woman here, he wasn't speaking down to Mary at all, okay? Uh, that word actually showed affection to his mother. Now, I want you to think about something, all you mothers out here. Jesus is on the cross, and he says, woman, behold your son. If he had said mother, what do you think that would have done to Mary? I think it would have hurt her that much more. I think her heart probably couldn't have taken it. But Jesus said, woman. Jesus is looking at Mary and he can see the pain and the anguish and the agony on her face. And <clears throat> I told you to look at Mary's face at the beginning of that clip. And, and I don't think the best actress in this world could act and capture what Mary felt at that time. I really don't. But she had pain. She had anguish in her face. And, and Jesus understood that hurt that she was feeling, that sword that was piercing her soul. He can see that Mary is crushed. And when he looked down at Mary, he said, Woman, Behold your son. You see, Jesus was showing his love for his mother while he was on the cross. He was making sure that she was going to be taken care of and well provided for. Because Jesus realized that he had nothing earthly to leave his mother. Right? You remember Jesus, when he was going, he said, the foxes have dens to sleep in, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. He didn't have anything. But he knew that he needed to leave provision for his mother. So he turned to John. Notice John was the only one of the disciples at the cross. What had happened to the rest of them? They scattered, didn't they? 
They run off. They abandoned him. But John was still there. Jesus also was telling Mary not to look upon him as her son anymore. Okay? When he said that, when he said woman, he, he's, he's giving her respect, but he's saying, I'm not your son anymore. Don't look at me that way. Look at me as your Savior, as your Redeemer. See, Jesus knew the need of a spiritual inheritance for Mary, which was far greater than any physical inheritance he could have left her. You see, in Jesus, we have help, don't we? We have help in every avenue of life. We have help that gets us beyond grief. We have help that gets us beyond hurt. And we have help that gets us beyond anguish. You see, Jesus wanted Mary to know that she needed him as her Savior, not just as her son. And you know what? When Jesus said that to her, we should be looking at that. Uh, in, in Sunday school, we're, we're teaching how to study the Bible. And we see that, and we see that we need a Savior too, don't we? We need to look at Jesus on the cross and see a Savior. Next we see Jesus say to John, Behold your mother. So why John? I mean, I think it's obvious he was the only one there, but why John? I think it was because he was one of the closest disciples to Jesus. And we can see his devotion here. He, he was there when everybody else ran and scattered and took off. John remained. In the Bible, if you were to go and look through all the gospel accounts, when you see Jesus, who do you see the most of the times with Jesus? Three people. Peter, James, and John. John was there. John when he said the disciple that Jesus or that he loved, that Jesus loved, he wasn't just, he wasn't puffing himself up. He was telling the truth. See, Jesus made sure that Mary, most of all, was taken care of spiritually. Jesus had brothers and sisters, a sister, right? But you know something about those brothers? They didn't believe that Jesus was the Messiah. Not at this point. John did. So that's why Jesus said, John, behold your mother. You see the spiritual connection. And you see a spiritual connection that we have with our brothers and our sisters in Christ that is very, very important. Right? You look around this room. You see brothers and sisters. You don't see Vicky. You don't see Nancy and Gilbert. You see brothers and sisters. Why do we say that? Because we have a spiritual connection. We have not only a spiritual connection, but we also have a spiritual connection. Uh, command that we're supposed to take care of one another, right? We're supposed to say, hey, Annette, get back in line, right? And see, most of you think that I'm up here just saying that, but I'm going to tell you, I want y'all to say, hey, Jamie, get back in line because I'm no different than y'all are. I struggle every day. So what can we learn from, from these two statements of Jesus on the cross? Two very short statements. Woman, behold your son and behold your mother. First, we see the humility of Jesus. Jesus is on the cross dying. Now think about it. 
If you were being tortured, what's your focus going to be on? Pain, me, right? Get me out of this. But where was Jesus' thought? He was worried about his mom. He was more ready to care for his mother and see that her physical needs were met, but more importantly, her spiritual needs were met. He wasn't worried about his condition on the cross. The next thing we need is, or the next thing that we see is the need for spiritual care. I hope and pray that over the last two years that we as a church have grown spiritually. And I told y'all that from the beginning. I would rather see us grow spiritually than numerically. Because if we all grow together spiritually, the, numeri- the numbers will take care of themselves. But we see the need for spiritual care. This is where the church, the brothers and sisters in Christ come into play. Seven things here. Be devoted to one another. Be devoted to one another. That's found in Romans 12.10. You know what that means? Be devoted to one another. Be humble. Right? Joy. You remember how to have joy? Jesus, others, yourself. Right? Put Jesus first. If we're devoted to other people in the church, put them before yourself. The next thing, be kind and compassionate to one another. Be kind and compassionate to one another. That's found in Ephesians 4.32. Live in harmony with one another. Live in harmony with one another. That's hard sometimes, isn't it? Because we're human. We've got our own way of doing things, our own way of seeing things, and uh, harmony sometimes can be difficult. But you want me to tell you how to have harmony with your brothers and sisters in church? Look to Jesus. If we can't have harmony in Jesus, something's wrong, right? And we've got to get it fixed. Live in harmony with one another is found in Romans 12, 16. This is a hard one. And Mike, you'll, uh, we, we were talking about that movie this morning, Jesus Revolution. This, this makes me think of that. Accept one another just as Christ has accepted you. Romans 15, 7. I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to get off on this tangent a little bit. Uh, There's a movie out called Jesus Revolution. I would encourage you all to go to the movie theater and see it. It's about the Jesus movement of the 1970s. And how many, well, I'm not going to ask you to do that, but those of you that were alive and remember the 70s, you remember the hippies and, and all that, right? Do you know where the Jesus, uh, Jesus movement started? With the hippies. So this story, this movie, and it's, it's a very good movie. But this struggling pastor of this church uh, welcomed the hippies in. And then it was two or three, and two or three became... 10 or 15, 10 or 15 became 40 or 50, and half of the church is packed out with hippies, and the other half is his regular congregation. Does that seem like something that would happen in a church? Absolutely. Because if that was to take place in this church, I, I hope and pray that I would be wrong, but the majority of the people would be over here, and the other people would be over here. But there was a part in the movie that just really hit me and brought me to tears. Uh, One of the deacons 
had been confronting this pastor over and over and over again saying, you need to get them out. You got to worry about the people who's paying your salary. And you know what he did? That pastor stood up and he just kept on doing what he was doing. Well, the, the church is full on one side, half full on the other side, and that deacon stands up in the middle of church service and he starts walking out and he gets to the back of the church and he looks back up and there's an old man up there and he said, are you coming with me? And that old man gets up and he takes about five steps and then he just gets in the pew with all those hippies and sits down and puts his arm around them. That's what we've got to do, church. We've got to accept people just as Christ accepted us. You know, Jesus, you wasn't perfect when you came to Jesus. And let me tell you a little secret. We ain't perfect now. And we're not going to be perfect this side of heaven. So we've got to accept people the way they are. The next thing is to serve one another in love. That's found in Galatians 5.13. Serve one another in love. Be humble. Let love take over. Let the love of Jesus that is in you take over and go and do and love on people. We've got opportunities all the time to love on people the way Jesus loved on people. The next thing, we've got to forgive one another. We've already talked about that a couple of weeks ago, but we've got to forgive one another. Because if we go around with something on our mind because Vicky said something, oh, no, I, I take that back, Vicky. Because Jenny Mahaffey said something about me and my big bald head the other week. And she said that. But you know what? I didn't get upset about it. But if I had, you know what? I need to forgive her for it, don't I? Absolutely. Vicky said thank you. Vicky gives me a hard time about picking on her. But I told her I only pick on her because I love her. But we got to forgive one another. We can't go around this world harboring or hanging on to all this stuff. And then the last one is we've got to encourage one another. That's found in 1 Thessalonians 5.11. Uh, but in Hebrews 10, it also says, Stir up one another in love. Here's the thing, and in, in, in not just in love, but in good works. Here's the thing. All of us have been guilty of being what... Um, Who called me an instigator? You. You. No, not you. Not you, Hank. I'm talking to my wife. We, we were to somewhere with Wayne and Judy. I forget where we were at. And she called me and Wayne Fowler instigators. But have we not all been instigators sometime in our life? So we know how to do that, right? We know how to stir the pot and just step, step back and watch people do what they do, right? But you know what? We're so good at doing that. Why don't we stir that pot for a good thing, right? Stir up one another in love. Encourage one another to go out and love like Jesus loves. Let's not do it for the bad things. And by the way, you don't get a dress for that because you called me and Wayne both instigators. He'll back me up. Huh? We, we're not going into that. This, this isn't confessional time. They both need to get a dress. I didn't say anything about Judy other than she was there. See, isn't it good to laugh in church? Isn't it good to laugh in church? But you know what? Those seven things, if we do those seven things, we'll be closer to Jesus. We'll be closer to each other. And that's what it's all about. 
Remember Jesus on the cross when he said, Woman, behold your son, and John, behold your mother. So we have the invitation this morning. Uh, if God's calling you to do something, I would pray that you answer his call this morning. I'll be up front. I'll be here to pray with you. Uh, whatever you need this morning, you can come get on the altars. Uh, the crosses are still here. Um, come get a cross, pray over it. Be ready to give it to somebody and share the love of Jesus. Father, this is your invitation. And Father, we just pray that your will will be done in the lives of each and every person here. Father, give them a boldness if they need to come get on the altar, if they need to come make a decision, whatever it is that you're putting on their hearts to do today. Father, I would pray that you give them the boldness and the courage to step out and to answer that call. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Would you stand and sing this hymn of invitation with us?